Hi, I'm Kate Pfeiffer, and I'm talking to you from my home on Martha's Vineyard Island. I am lucky because I get to write books for children. Some of the books I've written are Henry the Dog with No Tail, Double Pink, President Pennybaker, My Mom is Trying to Ruin My Life, The Problem with the Puddles, and Witch Puppy. Like you, I spend a lot of time doodling and drawing. I particularly love to draw pictures of dogs. I'd like to show you a few of the drawings that I did today. These two are not standing six feet away from each other, but they are wearing masks. Hmm, does that make them good dogs or bad dogs? This dog is smelling a flower. Mmm, smells so good. But wait, what's on the end of this dog's tail? A flower? Ah, uh, that's silly. This dog wants to smell a flower, but this dog is wearing a mask. This dog is not happy. And if you look at her tail, it looks like a question mark. We know that dogs wag their tails when they're happy. I guess when their tails turn into the shape of a question mark, it must mean they're confused. What kind of tails on dogs would you draw? I'd like to see what you come up with. How about later today? You get some paper, some crayons or markers, and you draw some dogs with the wackiest, silliest, craziest, most colorful, funniest tails you can think of. I'll do it too. I mentioned before that I like writing books about dogs. In fact, every book I've written has at least one dog in it. In President Penny Baker, which was illustrated by the amazing artist Diane Good, a dog becomes president at the end of the book. I know, I know, I just gave away the ending, but even though you know the ending, I think you'll still enjoy the book. It's about a boy who runs for president because he thinks life is unfair and he wants to make it fair. And if ever there was a time that things seemed unfair, it's right now. In The Problem with the Puddles, two dogs named Sally, there's Big Sally and there's Little Sally, get left behind on an island by mistake. The Problem with the Puddles is a chapter book, but it has loads of pictures drawn by Trisha Tusa, and she's also amazing. While on the topic of amazing illustrators, I need to mention my father. His name is Jules Pfeiffer. You might know some of his other books like Bark George or Meanwhile. My dad and I have done four books together. One of them was called Witch Puppy, and it's about which puppy would get chosen to go live in the White House when Barack Obama got elected president. In January, a whole bunch of years ago, maybe even before you were born, my father came to Martha's Vineyard, which is the island I live on, to illustrate the book. I'm gonna show you what happened. Sasha and Malia, I love you both more than you can imagine. And you have earned the new puppy that's coming with us to the White House. My name is Kate Pfeiffer. How's it going? Well, there's the, this is the rough I did, and here's the finished. Oh, oh, look at them. This is my father, Jules Pfeiffer. We're working on a book together called Which Puppy? The book is about which puppy will get chosen to go to the White House. Our editor, Paula Wiseman, didn't give my father much time. We told Jules he had to have it done in 14 days. So my father moved to Martha's Vineyard Island for the month of January to draw. I live on the island and my father has a charming old summer house here. He insisted on staying in his house. I was working downstairs all bundled up at my drawing table. He drew and drew and drew. While he drew, I worried. I worried that he'd freeze to death, he'd slip on the ice, or that he'd catch a cold. At the end of the month, when it was clear that he didn't slip or fall or freeze to death, when it was clear that the book was going to be beautiful, 
I asked him how many dogs he thought he had drawn. I think over a hundred, and they all look like this. I wanted the dogs to look expressive. The faster you work and the more you think in terms of the emotions of the dog, in terms of the story, you know, how are the dogs supposed to be feeling at this particular point? And, and their expressions show that. And I wanted to have fun. Doing this was a lot of fun. working on the book and the art just came in and we gave Jules all the time in the world and now I have one weekend to design the book so you have to get out of my office I have to get back to work I have no time goodbye another book I did with my dad is called Henry the dog with no tail Henry was inspired by the real Henry who was a dog with no tail Henry was an Australian Shepherd and like a lot of Australian Shepherds he didn't have a tail what he did have was brains. He was really, really smart. So Henry inspired this story, and my dad was very excited to illustrate it. He came over one day and he said he wanted to get started right away. He had paper and some pens to do some sketches, and he started drawing Henry. I have those drawings. I'm going to show them to you, but I'm going to show them to you to show you that the first drawings that someone does in a book looks nothing like what the end of the book will look like. You might think that some of these drawings aren't so good, and they're not, but that's what happens. You usually have to do a lot of not so good drawings as practice, and then you can get a good drawing. The same thing happens when you're writing a book. You start with a lot of sentences and words that you're gonna end up taking out. There are a lot of different ways to draw a dog. Now I'm gonna show you a way that I sometimes do it that takes just six lines and a circle. Line number one is a V, a sideways V, or maybe the tip of an arrow. Line number two can be a little tricky, but make what looks like a U somewhere close to the top of the sideways V. There you go. Now you're ready for line number three, which is going to be in the shape of half a rainbow, like this. Line number four is the tail and make it any way you want. The best way to describe line number five is like a backwards two. It takes practice, but you'll get it. And line number six, your final line, is just a straight line. Start from right behind the dog's ear and draw a line down. Now you're ready to make your doggy's eye. So draw a circle somewhere near the top of the sideways V. And there you have it, a dog drawn with six lines and a circle. Today, I'd like to read the story of President Penny Baker to you. And I'd like to thank my publisher, Simon & Schuster, for permission to read this book to you, all of you, at this time. On a not too sunny, but not too cloudy, not too hot, but not too cold, Saturday afternoon in May, Luke Pennybaker asked his father one question, because Luke Pennybaker wanted just one thing. Dad, he said, can I watch TV? His dad didn't say yes, as Luke thought he should have. And he didn't say no, as he usually did when Luke asked him if he could watch TV. Instead, he answered Luke's one question with five entirely different new questions. Luke thought that was unfair because one question deserved one answer, not five more questions. Did you clean your room? Did you eat your lunch? Did you brush your teeth this morning? Did you feed the fish? Did you ask your mother if she needs help with anything? No, 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 answered Luke. Then he asked again, so can I watch TV? This time his dad gave him just one answer, no. So Luke Pennybaker cleaned his room, ate his lunch, brushed his teeth, fed the fish, and asked his mother if she needed help with anything.
Then he went back to his father with his one question. Dad, now can I watch TV? Luke Penny Baker's father looked at his son and said, no. It was at that very moment, that precise instant, that exact time and place that Luke realized life was unfair. A few moments later, after Luke yelled as loud as he could and was sent to his room, he decided that he would do whatever he could to make life fair. And so goes the story of how Luke Pennybaker became the youngest boy ever to run for president. Luke went to school that Monday and announced his candidacy. Please vote Pennybaker for president, he said. I promise to make life fair. I promise that if I'm elected president, you'll only have to do homework when you want to. I promise that if I am elected president, you'll be able to eat dessert any time of the day and go to sleep as late as you want to. I promise that if I'm elected president, every child in America will get a dog or a cat or a hamster or a gerbil or a rabbit or an iguana. The children in Luke's school all cheered. Penny Baker for president. That week, they set up a campaign office and named Luke's dog, Lily, as the vice presidential candidate. They put up posters and called their cousins, asking them to send their pennies to the Penny Baker for President campaign. Luke and Lily spent the summer traveling around the country campaigning. They campaigned on top of a mountain in Colorado and on the beach in the Jersey Shore. They campaigned in a candy store in Kansas, and at a dog show in Detroit. The rest of Luke's family came too, but they were just vacationing. On a campaign stop in New Hampshire, a reporter asked Luke what party he was in. Are you in the Democratic Party are you, or are you in the Republican Party? Luke replied, I'm in the birthday party. He told the reporter that in the birthday party, kids get treated like it's their birthday every day of the year. They get to eat cake and ice cream and open presents every morning. They get to wear shorts in the winter and dirty clothes to fancy parties. They get to play games at school and draw pictures during dinner. They can flood the bathroom when they take a bath and keep their room as messy as they want to. Later that summer at a campaign stop in Iowa, a reporter asked Luke what was the first thing he would do as the youngest president in America. Luke replied, paint the White House orange. The other presidential candidates were asked what they thought about Luke's idea. One of the candidates said she thought the White House should be painted blue. The other candidate thought it should be painted red. But Luke liked orange, and it seemed like the rest of the country did too. By late summer, Luke and Lily were leading in the polls Lily was named most popular pup in the country. Happy birthday became America's most sung song. We're tired of the unfair. We want Penny Baker for president. Bark for the birthday party, roared the crowds. To show his support, the current president bought 40 gallons of orange paint and started to paint the White House. When he ran out of paint, he bought 40 more gallons and 40 more and 40 more after that. By November, the White House was painted orange. On election morning, Luke went to cast his vote, but he was told he couldn't vote because he was too young. Luke went on TV to point out how unfair it was that he was not allowed to vote. Lily stood by his side and barked because she hadn't been allowed to vote either. We'll vote for you, said the voters. Luke and Lily won the election by a landslide. In January, President Luke Pennybaker and Vice President Lily Pennybaker moved into the Orange White House and ordered cake, ice cream, and presents for every person and dogs for every bone and bones for every dog in America. But the mayor of New York didn't like her present, and a senator in Maine was allergic to ice cream, and the governor of California wouldn't eat anything with sugar in it, and the dog of a city councilman in Cincinnati refused to chew on his bone. And the phone started ringing, and Lily wouldn't stop barking, and everyone wanted to talk to President Penny Baker. They needed him to come here and go there and look at this and talk about that, and all President Penny Baker wanted to do was watch TV, ride his bike, 
read his books, and play with his toys. He even wanted to clean his room, eat his lunch, brush his teeth, feed the fish, and help his mom. But he couldn't because he was far too busy being president. It wasn't fair. So after his first week of being president, the youngest president in history stepped down. I want to do what's fair, he said. He packed his bags and left the Orange White House. As he walked away, he turned around and looked back. The new president was sitting near a window looking out at Luke. Luke waved and yelled, good luck. I know you'll be fair. The new president nodded, picked up her paw, and barked back. The end. I look forward to seeing you soon.